Hi, this is John Wood from Automatic. Today we're going to take a look at PCDM's probe calibration. Uh, we're not going to really look at defining and calibrating a probe and the settings like that, but we want to work out what's really happening in the background. Uh, and this is with a view to making sure that when we take measurements with more than one probe tip, that the, the measurements will relate correctly to one another. Uh, for the purposes of this, we're going to just consider a, a clean system, a new CMM, for example. We switch the machine on and let it home, and the machine drives to its home position, at 0, 0, 0. Uh, so for a, a bridge type CMM, it's typically the top rear left or front left corner. And we want to pay particular attention to, to this point down here, uh, which I've coined the the term zero point, it's not an official term, but it, it will help in explaining what's going on, uh, which is basically the, the bottom center of the, the quill or Z rail or RAM, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we, we refer to this point here as a zero point, in effect, where the, the CMM ends and the probe begins. Again, we're not going to talk about selecting components to define the probe, but we define them build a probe here and the information for all these components is, is kept in the probe.dat file which uh, is installed with the, the software and this tells PCDMS how to draw these components uh, so it can graphically represent them uh, and part of this information is the, the nominal sizes uh, and dimensions of all these components. So when we define a probe uh, it adds a, a tip in so what it's knowing there is it's got the offsets from my zero point to my tip center uh, you can see this so if you let your machine home don't move it let the machine home uh, click OK you know just select a probe put the cursor in the edit window above the load probe command and you should see uh, zero 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 in the the status bar for the probe, uh, for the CMM position. This is because uh, the, the zero point is at the machine's home position, it was at zero, zero, zero. Um, click down below the load probe and the tip command, all of a sudden it can see that we've got this probe loaded and it's now telling us where the, the tip center is. You should see that, that difference there. And the point I'm getting at is when we define a probe, uh, you know, we, we define all these components in a probe. Anytime we do that or add an angle in, PCDMUS will know the theoretical offsets from the zero point tip center. So we're going to go ahead and calibrate our probe tip. Um, so we're not, you know, we now have to do a quick measure, make sure we've got the settings, set the reference to quick measure. And we're then faced with this question, qualification tool move. But this is mainly what this presentation is really focused on, is understanding what's going on when you say, when it, if you say yes or no here. Uh, in this instance, we're, again, we're assuming this is the first probe we've ever calibrated. We're going to say yes, manual hit to locate the tool. So we, we take the hit, um, click OK, let PC must do its thing and it will calibrate this probe tip. If we go in and look at the results, we should see something like this. So we've got the profile name, date, time, and then because we said yes, the qualification tool has moved, we'll see three lines in these results here. So the first one is Cal sphere, that's just the ID I've given to my calibration sphere, and we get an X, Y, Z value and the diameter is whatever we entered when we define the tool. We then get that tip T1A0B0, we've got the theoretical X, Y, Z offsets and the diameter, and then we've got the measured X, Y, Z offsets and the diameter. We're getting, say, the, the location of the sphere in machine coordinates, we've got the theoretical X, Y, Z of the tip, and then we've got the measured 
Now, if we go and look at those results, we'll notice that theoretical x, y, z values are identical. Does this mean that this probe is perfect? Well, no. It just means that um, PCDMS doesn't know any different. So any any errors in this probe build that we've defined, you know, if it's a bit longer or a bit shorter or a bit off in one way or the other, yeah, all those errors within that physical build-up of components actually just passed into the uh, the position of the reference sphere. So just to expand on that, here we've got the the physical real probe that we can see, and we've got the dashed line showing the, the theoretical probe that goes up and measures the reference sphere, uh, but it doesn't. It doesn't know you've got this difference between the, the theoretical and the, the real world. And so the reported sphere location is, is different in position by the same amount as our probe varies from perfect. In this example, just keeping things nice and simple, we're just going to say it's 0.2 mil shorter. So we've got this 0.2 mil uh, difference. So if we had some means of verifying the reference sphere position, Independently from the, the CMM, we see that the the X Y Z position of the sphere reported in the results is actually out by 0.2 of a mil. So you might think this is going to be a problem, but it's not really. Um, if we were just taking measurements, we've got one probe tip, then all the features measure it would just have that same error. Um, you know, so you measure the a plane in the Z and then another plane at a different height in the Z, they, they're both going to have that that same discrepancy. So if you get the distance between them, you, you're going to get the right number. Uh, well, this <coughs> might become a problem is when we start to introduce a second probe tip. So just put out, I'm using the, the term probe tip here. So this is a, a specific tip angle or for a star probe, a different tip. A particular probe, so it's a, a, a probe tip combination, if you like. So, we're going to have a look at what happens in, in these cases. Uh, we're going to make a couple of assumptions here. We're just saying that the probe head is perfect and perfectly square. The CMM's perfect, so we're not going to get any sort of general variation, repeatability of measurement results. We're just looking at tip to tip comparison. Um, and we're going to say that this. Probe head and the stylus are, are perfect. Everything bang on. The only the only difference is we've got this uh, 0.2 millimeter. You know the, the whole lot's 0.2 mil shorter than theoretical. And we're assuming that this this discrepancy is in the actual say the the tip itself. So that when we move the the probe head to a90 b90. Awesome, it's, it's 0.2 mil short in the X. So we can see that here. We've indexed the probe to 90-90. So again, we've got this. It knows where the, the theoretical tip is on the dashed line. And we can see where it really is. Uh, we've also got this discrepancy on the sphere location. So the, the real sphere is drawn in solid. And we've got the dashed line. And that's the measured position, if you like, the PCD in this, that's where PCD in this, thinks this, this sphere is. And when we do the calibration, if we, again, because we've got sort of fabricated results here, we can, we can see we've got this uh, 0.2 mil difference. So 0.2 mil in the X is coming from the the shortness, if you like, of the probe, and we've also got a 0.2 mil difference in the Z, um, and that's coming from the reference sphere position. So, although in theory this tip at 9090, the the Z height, if you like, of the, the probe tip is exactly where it should be theoretically, we're actually seeing a a report of 0.2 mil difference. So. 0.2 mil in X is coming from the probe itself. We've got 0.2 mil coming from the, the location of the reference sphere. 
Okay, let's get a bit clearer here. So, what happens when we go to take some measurements of this in terms of them relating correctly to the measurements taken with the mass probe? Well, we can see here, take it straight down in Z with A0, B0, and where it contacts, we know we've got this 0.2 mil discrepancy. Hey, the software thinks the probe's 0.2 mil longer than it is. So the measured hit's going to be at the bottom of this dashed line here. We index round to 90, 90, A90, B90. And we take the same hit or a hit on the same surface. Again, we'll just take if it's nice and square. And, yeah, so we, we take a hit in the same place. Um, and we've got this discrepancy. Uh, again, we've got this 0.2 mil shorter than theoretical. And the red dashed lines where PCD must think the tip is. So again, you can see the Z height is going to be the same. This 0.2 mil difference. Again, just a, a different example. Take it on the in the X on the edge of the part there. With mass probe. We've got no error in X on that probe. That's only got discrepancy in Z, so it's going to read that point there. Um, we then index it to A90, B90, and we take the hit. And again, we've got the theoretical there, and then the measured to the red dotted line. So that's coming in. And again, you've got uh, the results will agree with each other in, in X. Um, so what happens is the, the errors in the definition of the reference surposition position are, are passed over to every other probe tip that's calibrated when we say no it's not moved when we say the reference server hasn't moved so this holds true for any probe tip combination uh, deviations say in the mass probe are, are, are absorbed if you like by the other probe tips now in real life everyone has different setups so you've got People who've got probe racks with lots of modular probes, you might only the modular probes, the probe modules that you swap over by hand. You obviously get some big, big machines and you've got the reference turn and it lives in one place on the table and never moves. Um, and you can also move it around, you know, you might have a small machine and you've got to move the sphere around and calibrate it mid program if you're on a, a manual. Uh, non-indexing head. Uh, so what we're really focusing on is when you've got multiple modules, designate one as your master probe, and that's the only probe that you ever use for this uh, position. Yeah. Um, ideally, you want to use a, a short, large tip. Um, it's just a bit more accurate. Yeah, and if possible, ideal world, don't use the master probe for general measurement duties because it might get damaged and bent and chipped. And you swap your master probe out, then you basically need to recalibrate everything. Um, and in theory, once you've calibrated a tip and it relates correctly to the master probe, could argue that well, I could use that to define the calibration surface position. It relates correctly to the master probe, so it should give the calibration sphere in the right position. The problem you, you get is you start to get a, an accumulation of errors. Uh, if you got five microns in X from probe one to probe two, and then another five microns in X from two to three, another three, and another five microns from three to four, you you just get this accumulation of errors, and, and all of a sudden you you get probe six not agreeing with probe probe one. Uh, yeah, even if you've got a manual CMM or a non-indexing head, just understanding what happens uh, is is useful. You know, if you've got to uh, mid-routine index a probe and calibrate it, and you've had to move the reference sphere off the table and then put in a different hole to get to a, a different angle, or like the required angle, and as long as you pick that reference sphere up, with the the previous tip to define it, and then you 
index and calibrate the new tip, then you you should be good. Uh, as with lots of things we see in, in this in this field, it's very easy to get numbers that look right. You know, the, the, a lot of the time the errors by doing things are you get by doing things incorrectly aren't immediately obvious, and that's the danger. You you, know, you get a slight discrepancy from this probe to that probe, and then from this probe to that probe, and you end up rejecting good parts or passing bad parts. So the main takeaway here is relating to this this window here. Only ever say yes when you're using the master probe. Yeah, it's the only probe that is ever used to take a hit on the sphere, a manual hit on the sphere. Or even if you take the the sphere off and put it back in the same place each time, it won't repeat perfectly. So you can say yes, DCC hits, but only for the master probe. Any other probe, the answer's no. And that's how you get to a situation where all your probes, they correct one of them. Uh, thank you for watching and listening.